Today we're doing some flour dumplings with a beautiful next level coconut, chilli and lime sauce. It's a really simple recipe and I know I start off by saying this about all recipes but this is going to surprise you. Dumplings can sometimes be a bit fiddly, there can be a little bit of preparation, a few dishes being created along the way and it all gets a bit of a hassle. These are not. These are simple and they're the best tasting dumplings and the best looking dumplings I bet you're ever going to make. So we've only got three things to chop so let's just start. Three cloves of garlic in this recipe. Give it a smash, take the outer paper off and give it a quick chop. The good thing about this is you don't need a mortar and pestle you can just do a rough chop because we're actually going to quickly cook these aromatics before we add them in to our meat mixture. I'm doing mine with a pork mince, but as always with these recipes, you can choose your protein and you could use a nice chicken mince or prawns chopped up or tofu for vegetarians would be delicious. So that's the garlic done. So let's just do one long red chili. If you don't like chili, obviously you can leave this out, but I highly recommend putting at least a little bit in. I don't mind the seeds. These long chilies are relatively mild. Obviously the smaller the chili, the hotter the chili. So if you can't get the long ones, then just cut back a little bit if you don't want it too spicy. And then the last ingredients that we're going to put in is those coriander roots and stem which I often talk about the forgotten parts of the coriander plant everybody uses the leaves but the stalks and the actual root of the coriander is what holds all the flavor and it's more of an earthy flavor so I'm going to leave those out we don't need those today I'm just going to scrape these coriander roots because they can be a bit gritty. You do need to wash them first of all to make sure that you get any dirt off, but then just those little hairy bits, just scrape them and then just give them a bit of a chop. So this is a little bit unusual, this recipe, because you don't often cook some of the ingredients before you stuff your dumplings. So something different, but they're just delicious. I have to share this recipe with you. So that's all the chopping done. The only other thing you need to have ready before we cook are your sauces. So just measure those out with the recipes that you've got and have your protein ready. And the last thing we're going to add is just some of this beautiful Thai basil. Anyone who knows me knows me. This is my favourite herb. It's got a beautiful aniseed flavour which you don't get with normal basil. Um, but you can substitute this recipe with normal basil if you need to because it is inside the dumpling, it's not as a prominent a flavour. Uh, but we'll use Thai basil if you possibly can, it's just beautiful. And we'll just take a little bit of that and we'll just give that a couple of chops. Don't do over chop leaves, they'll just um, wilt into nothing. So we're going to cook. Okay. Let's just quickly fry off those chopped ingredients. You just need a splash of oil and a medium heat. Don't put your wok on too hot because you've got the garlic, which will burn very quickly. So those are the chopped ingredients. Garlic, coriander, chili. My goodness, that sounds like a good friendship. Just pop those in. This is not going to take long at all. Give them a second. Start frying. So we're not cooking the meat at this stage, just these aromatics. We are making a steamed dumpling, so the meat will cook when we steam the whole thing. We just want to get some flavour into that filling. And what better way to do it than adding these three ingredients. So when that garlic just starts to release its fragrance, just starts to give a lovely golden brown certainly don't want to take it any further than that. Then just in with those sauces, in with that Thai basil and a teaspoon of sugar, that's just the white sugar from the pantry and that is it, turn it off. Don't need to cook it any longer. 
and we're just going to add that in now to our meat. Okay, so let's just scrape that into our mince and give it a good mix. So that's all there is to it. That's the dumpling mixture all done. How easy is that? And now I'm going to show you how to make these beautiful dumplings. And I have to tell you, I'm really excited. So we're using the round dumpling wrappers and these are nice and thin and easy to use. Don't use the square wonton wrappers. It won't work for this recipe because we're going to make them look like a flower and flowers don't have straight edges. So we need round ones. So we need four for each flower. So let's just lay out four on our clean, dry surface. And all we're gonna do is join them together. Okay, so just start to join them together. Just a little bit of water on one edge and overlap. Like that. And then a little bit of your mixture in each one. Now this is sort of four dumplings in one dumpling. So they're really substantial. So this is a really big entree or it's a main meal. This really is. And when you see this with the sauce, it's absolutely perfect for a dinner. And even you could serve it with some rice if you want to. Now all we're doing is wetting the edge, top and bottom. This is an exciting bit. Okay, take your first one and just fold it over and press. We don't have to do any fancy pleating, just press. And then the second one. Don't be tempted to do them all together because you want these joins overlapping. This is probably the easiest dumpling you're going to make, to be honest. All the way to the end, got our four beautiful. So just give them a press. They don't have to be sort of super sealed because I'll show you later why, but just so they're not gonna fall apart as we roll. Now this is where it comes in. We're going to take the first one and we're going to roll it quite tightly and then we're going to keep going and just sort of ease off the pressure so it's not as tight because these are the outer petals of our flower and then look at that, that's so pretty. We just take a little bit of water just to seal it and then we're going to pop that into a steamer. Let's do that again, partly because I enjoy it so much. Okay, so we've got four wrappers, which we join together with a little bit of water on just the edge. And we give them a press down to secure. We add about a teaspoon of a mixture in the center of each of the four wrappers. Okay, and then we wet around the curve. You can see why this would not work now with a square wonton wrapper. Wouldn't look anything like a flower. And then we're going to do one at a time like you make a normal dumpling. Taking care to give a press at the join and then we transform it into a flower. So we roll the first one a bit tight because it's the centre and we keeping the bottom as you roll, try and keep it even so it stays as all at the same level at the bottom and then open it up. Now, I like the fact that it's opening because we're going to, when we steam it, we're going to pour a beautiful sauce and it's all going to drizzle in and around that pork mixture. And it looks like a flower that's opening. So please don't think that if your seal around the top of the dumpling is not completely closed, that it's a problem. It's not, it's an asset. It's creative and it's beautiful. So just give the bottom a little spray of oil 
or spray the bottom of your steamer just so they don't stick just makes it easier and don't overcrowd them and that's it let's cook them okay so our dumplings are ready just to go over some water in a steamer and these are going to take about 20 minutes so we're just going to pop the lid on they're quite thick so do give them enough time you'll know when they're cooked because some of them you can see through so you'll see the pork mincers change color and you'll be able to see that the, the actual dumpling wrapper goes translucent so they'll just look after themselves and we'll make the sauce so I'll talk to you now about the sauce that we're going to make for these dumplings. This sauce is going to elevate the dumplings, take them to the next level, and you can almost drink this sauce, it's so good. It's a coconut based sauce, but it's got some really lovely compound flavours going through it. And the reason it's got those flavours is we're actually going to mix aromatics with fresh, limey, zesty flavours. One of the main ingredients in it is something you might not have used before, and it's called crap chai. It is a rhizome, so it's part of the ginger family. And like the galangal, which I've talked about using in curry paste, it's a different sort of aromatic flavor that we're going to get from this crap chai. It's not the same as ginger. It's a milder flavor, I think, a more zingy, a bit more fragrant, a bit lighter, and it's perfect for this very light coconut sauce. So Kratchai normally comes in a pickled form in a jar from an Asian supermarket, or you can also buy it frozen. It's very rarely seen uh, fresh, and powdered forms just don't have the freshness that we need. And the other main flavor that's going to come through this sauce is the kaffia lime leaf. So the kaffir lime leaf grows in a double form, so two leaves, and we do need to take this vein, this hard vein off of the back, so you can just peel that off, so halve it, pinch it between your fingers, and that vein should come off quite easily. It's just a little bit bitter, it's also much harder to chop with it in, so just get yourself the freshness, oh, you can grow these. Get yourself a plant, it'll grow all year round, all types of climate, and the freshness of this is just going to really zing. When you're doing any sort of sauce, or any, any flavors really that you're trying to balance, you kind of want a harmony. I often think of aromatics as like the bass tones in music, and the sort of more fragrant, zesty, lime, citrus as like the high notes. So you really want that harmony. They both speak to each other and they need to come together. And if you have something that's just one of those um, elements, it's flat. Nothing in your mouth is going to tell you that it's complex. It's like a, a 1D or a 2D flavor. And we want to bring 3D into these flavors. So we've got the lime leaves, we've got the aromatic in the crap chai, and we're going to add some fresh lime at the end. And of course, a little bit of sweetness which will come from our chili jam. And then we're just going to have the coconut milk, which is going to transfer that flavor all the way through the sauce. So we're going to grate the crap chai because we want it sort of nice and fine. We don't want chunks in this sauce. So just get a grater and just watch your fingers. They're quite small and just get as much as you can. Some people get this mixed up with galangal, or they sometimes call it lesser ginger, lesser galangal, but this is actually a different plant. This is crap chai. So that's what we need. And then with the lime leaves, I'm just going to show you how to cut these really finely. So pile your little leaves up, so they're sort of half leaves because you've taken the vein out from the middle. Pile them up into a neat little pile and roll them up into a bundle quite tightly is you want a nice dense package of leaves that you can then cut through and you want it absolutely as thin as you can possibly go because these are leaves and they will get stuck in people's teeth and they're not chewable but they're there for the fragrance so just go as thin as you possibly can and at the end, just discard any of the ones that are just, they've just missed and they're just a bit too big. So there we go. That's what you want. Just a really nice, fine, fine little shreds. Okay, so the only other thing we're going to do is pick a couple more of the basil leaves. 
Not too many. We've got basil in the dumplings, but this will just complement it. And we don't normally cut basil up too much because we want it to still be really bright with its flavour. But with this sauce, we don't want big leaves either. So we are going to cut it. And then that's it. We're just going to put this together in a saucepan and it's as quick as that. Okay, to put this sauce together, it's really simple, but the balancing of the flavors is really important. So I am going to talk to you about this once we get this on the heat. So a saucepan or any sort of um, frying pan will do for this. And the first thing we're going to do is to fry off that crachai. So it's nicely grated and we do want to get it to release its aromatic qualities. So once we've done this, we're going to add in the coconut milk and the kaffir lime leaves and just let it simmer very gently. And one of the star ingredients in this uh, recipe is the chili jam. So you've got that in the pantry pack and that comes into play in a lot of Thai cooking. So it's really important to keep stocked up of that one. And it also gives that sweetness as well as the chili hit. Okay, so that's starting to give a nice little sizzle. So the next thing in is the chili jam. And we'll just give that a second just to make friends with the crack chai and caramelize a little bit. Now you can add in those lime leaves for the shreds of kaffir lime. Oh my goodness, smells amazing. This is such a simple sauce. Okay, now about half a tin of that coconut milk goes in. Obviously you can make double quantity. If you make more dumplings, that's fine. And now we just need to season this. So in with the fish sauce. And in with a little bit of sugar to balance everything out. There is already some sugar in that chili jam, so don't overdo the sweetness. And with anything with coconut milk, you don't want it too rich. Rich and sweet, it's no good. You need to have that harmony I was talking about. We need the seasoning, we need the fish sauce, and we need the sugar, but they should be in the middle. They shouldn't be the first things that hit us. So when we taste, and tasting this sauce is absolutely critical. We have to taste it. We have to know where the palate is. Okay, last thing in is the Thai basil and just give it a last little stir and turn it off. How good does that look? Now, taste. Okay, the first thing I'm getting is sweetness. So it's quite sweet for me. Now that's up to you to change, but we've got to add our lime now our fresh lime, and that's now going to change where it hits me on the palate. So let's add the lime. So that's half a lime I'm putting in. Lime should always be in the end. You don't add lime at the beginning of a recipe. Okay, now try again. Zing. Okay, those are those high notes I was talking about. Oh my goodness, now the harmony starts. I've got that, it stays on the palate, but underneath I'm still getting that crap chai and that beautiful coconut creaminess is coming through the middle. And now the sugar and the salt, they're just in there, but they're not prominent. It's beautifully balanced. But you need to work at this. You'll find which way your palate wants to go and don't be scared just to tweak it. Add a little bit more fish sauce if you like it, a little bit more salty, but just do everything very minutely and keep tasting, keep tasting, keep tasting. And the other thing I'm going to tell you about a sauce like this is it's going to change the longer you leave it to sit. So if you do this now and pop it to the side for 15 minutes, go back to it, you're going to find that those flavours have made friends. This is now a party. These are not strangers anymore. They're all talking to each other and they've actually all become this one unit. And that is the beauty of leaving the sauce just for 15 minutes or so Leave it and it will get to room temperature. When things are at room temperature, they taste better. That is a big secret that people don't understand. It just takes away from that sort of just cooked kind of heat 
You want it to just be gentler on the palate and then everything just relaxes a little bit and those flavors just dance around so much more. So put it to one side, leave it, and then we'll dress the dumplings at the end and it's going to be a party. Okay, let's have a look. They look wonderful. Let's take them out gently. We don't want all that hard work to go to waste. I love the way that they open up and that they allow me to see the colors of the basil and the chili poking through. So let's get that chili coconut lime sauce. Just been sitting there for a few minutes. And now it's going to go through those petals of the flower. This is like a dream dinner. Don't be shy with the sauce. I think the family will want to drown their dumplings in this sauce. But these dumplings are just as good with a dipping sauce because that filling is so flavoursome and juicy. Okay, now let's just do a little bit of dressing, a little bit of the fresh zingy kaffir lime, just a bit of brightness. If you want to make that into a dinner, you could maybe add some steamed rice with it as well. But honestly, they're so filling these dumplings, that's four dumplings in one. So I don't think you'll need much else. Enjoy.